live in an age of speed. Cars, ships, airplanes, even man himself are constantly being urged faster and ever faster. Speedway racing is one of the many expressions of this thirst for speed. Before a meeting, the track is carefully leveled and rolled, and after every race, a drag round is necessary to restore the surface. When Speedway first came to Britain from Australia in 1928, it was known as dirt track racing. For a long time, the surface was invariably tightly packed cinders, but now many tracks are made from shale, rather like crushed brick. Shale is easier to maintain and holds water better than cinders. One of eight teams in the National League is Southampton, whose Barry Briggs is a New Zealander and one of the stars of Speedway. This is an entirely professional sport and is similar in many ways to professional football. But when a Speedway rider gets transferred, he gets a 15% cut of the transfer fee and another 2.5% for every year he's been a professional rider. It takes at least three years to make a professional from a promising youngster. First, he must find a promoter who will pay him, train him and generally nurse him along. It's a tough apprenticeship, and it's not surprising that there are only about 200 professional speedway riders in Britain. Enthusiastic beginners get unlimited help and advice from the professionals. Barry Briggs' young brother hopes to join Barry one day in the ranks of the world's top riders. Many promising youngsters fade away for one reason or another. This young New Zealander had a good try and then went back home to continue his career as a jockey. The Golden Helmet, one of the most sought after prizes in Speedway, carries a cash prize of seven pounds a week to the holder, but he must defend his title once a month against a nominated challenger. O Fundin is a Swede, has been world champion three times. But now he's challenging a fellow Swede, Bjorn Knutsen, for the Golden Helmet. Fundin is as well known in Norwich as in Malmö and Knutsen is as popular in Southampton as in Stockholm. Speedway has become an international sport. A duel between two Swedes for a British trophy could hardly arouse more excitement if it were between two local stars. Both riders have held the trophy before, but no one has yet equaled the record of Jack Parker, who held the Golden Helmet and its seven pounds a week for several years. Up to the starting gate, and they're off. No silences on these machines. Once a star rider is out in front, it's extremely difficult to overtake him. A speedway track hasn't got much straight, but on what little there is, the riders reach speeds of 70, 75 miles per hour, and the average speeds are up to 50. Speedway machines cannot be driven on public highways. They have no gearbox and no brakes. So they must be loaded onto a trailer to be taken to race meetings. The additional expense of a car and trailer can be very discouraging to a young rider who may have already spent over 300 pounds on his racing machine and 60 pounds on racing clothes. On top of this, an engine can blow up in one night's racing and cost 120 pounds to replace. In the National League, Barry Briggs and his Southampton team meet their old rivals, Wimbledon, league champions for three years. Before the racing, the teams parade, Southampton being led by their mascot, the six-year-old grandson of their promoter, Charlie Knott. Star riders like Barry Briggs are handicapped and must start behind the others. This means they must ride through the rest of the field. So much dirt is thrown up from the machines in front that a rider may have to change his goggles three times during a race. When his goggles get covered in mud, he takes the hand off his bike for a split second and pulls down the dirty pair, leaving a clean pair underneath. The flying dirt also gets into his machine and causes havoc. There's only one place to be in Speedway, and that's in front.
frame of each machine is made specially to fit the rider. But all the engines are the same and are made by one British firm. So it's the rider that wins races. And once again, Barry Briggs has won for Southampton. Most star riders live near their home track. So soon after a match is over, they can be back with their families. Young Gary Briggs is two years old and is already getting the right ideas. If you're planning to be a future star, you just can't get in too much practice. Speedway has its hazards, and the wife of a rider must have great confidence in his skill and judgment, or the strain would soon become too much for her. A top rider can earn about 100 pounds a week, and most of them reckon to save enough in 10 years or so to buy a small business and retire from the track. In the meantime, June and Barry Briggs are busy raising a new team of riders. Even at home, there's no getting away from motorcycles. Many speedway riders start their careers as amateurs on grass tracks and across country scrambles. The machines and techniques for scrambling are quite different from speedway, but there's no finer way of finding out if you've got what it takes. Guts, determination, an aggressive spirit, and a will to win. new sport, developed from cross-country scrambling, is Speedway Steeplechase, an obstacle race in a Speedway arena over man-made hazards. In steeplechasing, the Speedway aces are up against tough opposition from the star riders of scrambling, and even Barry Briggs can't earn a place among the winners. The machines are different too. The engines are smaller and brakes must be fitted, though it doesn't look as if the brakes get used much. In this sort of setting, motorbike acrobatics by skilled riders are reasonably safe. There's a mole here for the coffee bar cowboys dying to do a ton on the M1. Chmurach!